This is Twit. Dot Dev. It turns out, to my surprise, is always HTTPS. Hmm? I, I I know. Hmm? I encountered something the other day that that I didn't realize had happened. I was over at Hover registering spinrite.dev because I thought it might come in handy since I'm planning to be spending the rest of my active coding life on what promises to be a very exciting and worthwhile project. So as I was checking out, I was presented with a pop-up confirmation notice, the likes of which I had never seen. It read, and it was number three of things I had to check off. It said, TLD info for .dev. And of course, TLD stands for top level domain. And it says, registration of .dev domains is open to anyone. You should be aware that .dev is an encrypted by default TLD by virtue of being inscribed in the HSTS preload list found in all modern web browsers. Websites hosted on .dev will not load ah. unless they are served over HTTPS, wow. i.e. have a valid SSL certificate installed. And I had to check. I have read and understand the requirements for .dev domains in order to proceed with the purchase. Hmm. <laughs> Isn't that cool? Yeah. So star.dev is permanently preloaded into the HTTP strict transport security, that's HSTS, list for all modern web browsers. Okay. Now, before I go any further, let me quickly review HSTS. As I just said, it stands for HTTPS Strict Transport Security. HSTS is an HTTP response header which web servers can send to browsers telling them to treat the site with strict transport security. This means to only use secure HTTPS TLS connections no matter what. If the browser receives a non-secured HTTP link, the HSTS status instructs the browser to automatically upgrade it without asking anybody else to HTTPS. The header specifies a max age which tells the browser how long this security upgrade directive is to remain in effect. It's also possible to add an include subdomains parameter so that everything below that root domain will also be covered. The first time a site is accessed using HTTPS and the site returns the strict transport security header, the browser records and caches this information so that all future attempts to load that site using HTTP will automatically be promoted to using HTTPS instead. When the expiration time specified by the strict transport security header elapses, the next attempt to load the site via HTTP will proceed as normal instead of automatically using HTTPS. Whenever the strict transport security header is delivered to the browser, however, it will update the expiration time for that site, essentially, you know, continually pushing it forward, so sites can refresh this information and prevent the timeout from expiring. Should it be necessary, for some reason, to disable strict transport security, setting the max age in that header to zero, over an HTTPS connection, of course, will immediately expire the strict transport security header, allowing access then via HTTP. But all this cleverness still leaves us with one problem. What about the very first time a browser visits a site? If that visit were initiated, for example, by following an HTTP link, maybe from a malicious email, the initial connection will be insecure, in plain text, unauthenticated, 
and susceptible to interception and on-the-fly modification of the traffic. Even if the web server is sending out HSTS headers, they could be stripped from the insecure connection so that the browser never receives them. The solution to this problem, this first contact problem, is the HSTS preload list. All modern browsers carry a large list of web domains which have previously proven to be HSTS capable by offering HTTPS TLS connections, redirecting any HTTP request over to HTTPS and sending an HSTS response header with an expiration time of at least a year. Those are the requirements in order to qualify for inclusion in the browser's master list. If all of those criteria are met, the domain qualifies for permanent HSTS registration. At that point, the HSTS preload site, you can go to hstspreload.org, can be used to submit a domain for inclusion in the global browser HSTS preload list. GRC.com has been on that list since the list's earliest days when we first discussed this on the podcast many years ago. And once on that list, any attempt to ever connect to port 80 will be redirected by the browser. Just be, just ignore that and go to port 443 for the establishment of a TLS connection, period. Okay, so with that bit of a refresher, just imagine the number of domains, the dot coms, that like grc.com is one, how many more? that must be on the list with those common top-level domains, .com, you know, and the others. As I said, grc.com has always been there. But so, but so much, so, so must be an incredible number of other domains. What's so super cool about the idea that .dev top-level domain is, by universal agreement, all HTTPS is that it avoids any need for subdomains of .dev being on the list. Instead of needing to have a list that enumerates all of those domains, like, for example, spinright.dev, there's only one entry on the list, star.dev. Down at the bottom of that HSTS preload page, uh, it talks about this. It says, uh, under the heading TLD preloading, it, they, they say owners of GTLDs, you know, global uh, top level domains, CCTLDs, or any other public suffix domains are welcome to preload HSTS across all their registerable domains. This ensures robust security for the whole TLD and is much simpler than preloading each individual domain. They finish, please, please contact us if you're interested or would like to learn more. So not only is this much simpler, but it is vastly more efficient. Since pretty much now everything you know needs to be HTTPS these days anyway, it's such a cool idea when a new TLD is created to simply declare the entire thing as, H as HTTPS only and place that single entry, star dot whatever, onto the global browser preload list. So much better than needing to have every subdomain needing to do that individually. And everybody's protected, even if they don't do the, the whole uh, HSTS uh, header routine. Okay, so I thought, what else might be on the list? I posed that question to the gang who hangs out in GRC's Security Now news group, noting that it would be possible to pull the current list from the open source Chromium repo and run a regular expression on it to extract only top level domains. One of our very active contributors, Colby Buma, 
who actually he's the one who got me into GitLab and has been helping incredibly to keep our GitLab instance organized during all this spin right work. He stepped up, grabbed, parsed, and filtered the current Chrome Chromium HSTS file. And sure enough, the .dev domain has a great deal of company. There are presently 440 top-level domains in the global browser HSTS list, meaning that any subdomain of any of those top-level domains will only be accessible by web browsers using authenticated and encrypted TLS connections. Okay, in alphabetical order, they are Android. Uh, you know, and so in every case, this is, you know, something dot Android, right? App, Azure, Bank, Bing, Boo, Channel, Chrome, Dad, Day, Dev, Eat, Esk, as in Esquire, E-S-Q, Fly, Foo, Glee, G-L-E. <laughs> it's going to register Steve dot Foo. <laughs> Same people register Steve.boo, I guess. Uh, I bet it's taken. <laughs> uh, Gmail, Google, Hangout, Hotmail, Ing, Insurance, Meet, Meme, Microsoft, Move, M-O-V, New, Nexus, Office, Page, Ph.D., Play, Prof, P-R-O-F, R-S-V-P, Search, Skype, Windows, Xbox, YouTube, and Zip. Huh. Okay, so Zip, so dot, dot .dev is there along with 39 others. We see that Google and Microsoft, who each own several of their own TLDs, have placed them on that list. And why not? You know, as desirable as it would be to be able to place .com, .org, .net, .edu, .gov, you know, the original bunch onto this list, or, or really just to abandon HTTP for user, client, web browsing altogether, I don't see how we're ever going to get there from here. You know, doing so would immediately make any HTTP-only sites inaccessible, and that's not something I can ever see happening in our lifetimes. But... What I think must be happening, because, you know, come on, Foo and Glee? <laughs> These just and, are new. And, right? and Dad? Exactly. Yeah. Uh, and that's the point. Any new registration of a TLD is probably automatically saying, put us on the, the, H, the, the, the global HSTS list for the entire TLD. Why not? That way, you're just saying to anybody who wants to set up a web server, great. Love to have you. Happy to take your forty fourteen ninety five per year f to maintain registration for you. Oh, by the way, you, you can only use. You're going to have to get a certificate, but of course that's free now too, with less with Let's Encrypt and the Acme protocol, um, or even did I think Digicert is now doing the same thing. So you know the the it's it's no longer the case that that's a problem. So yeah, let's make it mandatory. Anyway, I just never knew that. I thought that was very cool. If you love all things Android, well, I've got a show for you to check out. It's called All About Android, and I'll give you three guesses what we talk about. We talk about Android, the latest news, hardware, apps. We answer feedback. It's me, Jason Howell, Ron Richards, Wintwit Dow, and a whole cast of awesome characters talking about the operating system that we love. You can find All About Android at twit.tv slash AAA.